Hello there. I had a little thought on how I want to do this. Unlike some other videos out there, I actually have had this scope for over a month or so and use it for quite a few hours, testing various features and functions of it. And um, I thought I would share my thoughts on it. If it's not obvious by now, I have purchased this scope with my own money and for the money, it was the best feature-wise in this price range. And that's why I purchased it. So whether it's the right scope for you or not, it sort of depends on what's important. If HDMI output is important to you, this is not the scope for you. If it doesn't matter, then it might be. So this is the SDS 804X HD oscilloscope, 70 megahertz, 2 giga samples a second, 12 bit. So earlier in the summer, I decided that this year I'd get a new scope and give away my Rigel DS 1054Z to a relative. So that scope is gone if you're wondering why it's not around anymore. I only really need two scopes, I think. That's kind of the max. So yeah, I thought uh, it might be useful for somebody who doesn't have one. So then I embarked on figuring out what scope I was going to get to replace it. And I thought I knew what I was going to get until I looked a little deeper at bugs and features and then found out this scope was available. One of the big reasons for me to get it was the memory depth. Some people might find the 12-bit important, but for me it, it's the memory depth. It's just crazy. Uh, 100 meg points if you upgrade this to 24x HD. This one is liberated, so it is basically, uh, for all intents and purposes, an 824x HD. That's done via an SUPI command uh, and a serial generator, so it's quite easy. You don't have to modify the firmware or anything like that. Yeah, so what that opened up was 200 megahertz bandwidth and 100 meg point memory depth. Also the waveform update rate, I think it goes from like 60,000 to 120,000 uh, as well. So that's another difference, but it's definitely worth upgrading. The sample rate works in this fashion. So if you turn on one channel, you have the full two gig samples a second, 100 meg points. And this is assuming you've upgraded the scope to an 824X HD. Uh, if you go to two channels, it halves it. So you get one gig sample per second and 50 meg points memory depth. And as soon as you go to three, it quarters it. So you're at 500 meg samples a second and 25 meg points memory depth. And same if you put on the fourth channel as well, if you have all four going, that's how that works. I'll just turn it around, show the back here. Just the LAN connection, a USB for hooking up to your computer, a USB for hooking up devices to. Right now I've got a wireless mouse dongle here and then the pass fail trigger output here. And of course, the plug receptacle as well. All right. That covers what's in the back. Okay. And the rotary knobs feel really nice. I like the feel to them. They're not too, I want to say sandpapery, but they're, they're not, they're, they're nice and soft, is, is what I'm saying. Uh, you feel a little resistance, but it's not a grating uh, tactile resistance, if that makes sense. It's uh, nice, soft turns. Uh, you can feel the detents on these knobs. You can't hear them so much, but you can definitely feel each one. So that's nice. And push buttons as well. And then, of course, all the traditional rubber buttons. Pretty much what you'd expect. And, of course, the four channels here. And the calibration signal. This is... Um, this. This may look like an HDMI port, but it's not. This is for the arbitrary waveform generator and the um, logic analyzer attachments. So do not plug in an HDMI cable to this. Uh, you will break it. And then, of course, USB in the front, which I, I leave the front open. I find that useful for a memory stick. I do have this hooked up via network. I'll, of course, go over some tips as well. So I'll go ahead and boot this up here. I do find it quite useful. You have, um, there's of course a LAN port on here and you have access to a web interface, SCPI commands, and a few other settings on there. But also since you can fully remote control this via PNC, you can do practically anything on the scope, except for the physical stuff front there. But yeah, you can you can change all the settings uh, via that software. So that's pretty cool. You can do it via web browser or you can do it via PNC client. Doesn't really make a difference. The update rate, on VNC, it's never been great, so it does drop some frames. I covered that in my previous video. So this is sort of uh, meant to be a quick rundown, and uh, I'll also go over some settings here that you might find helpful. So there's a few things that are helpful here. Uh, if you go to display and menu, uh, for those that may need a larger font size, you can change that. It does change most of the things on the screen, except for some of the small stuff, like some of the displayed on-screen measurements, uh, but everything else does enlarge. 
So you can see the difference there. It's going from small to large. And the other thing is, uh, let's see, under display and menu, if you set the hide menu to off, that will basically keep the menu from shifting over as you're doing things. I've actually found that quite annoying, so I do have that set to off now, uh, which was suggested by somebody in comments. Super useful. The other thing is, there's two options here. One's embedded and one is floating. So I'll try to explain that. Uh, if you have it set to floating, then it will hide the graticules uh, behind the menu. So you might have some information off screen that's hidden away by the menu and you won't be able to see until the menu disappears. You can see um, these two graticules will be hidden behind the menu. So they don't shift. Then if you change that um, back to embedded, they do shift over and it resizes depending on whether there's a menu here or not. So you can see that shifting over and making the graticules narrower. Then there's one more thing under utility and system settings, which is your horizontal reference markers here. You'll notice if I zoom in and out on the horizontal scale, they stay where they are. Defaultly, Defaultly, that's set to uh, delay in 50%. And then what happens there is it goes off the screen and changes as you change your time base, uh, which can be quite annoying. So uh, it is definitely better to have that set to position instead of delay in the 50%. So that way you can change your horizontal scale and those markers stay put. So great tip there. And then uh, I think that's about it. I do have it set up to uh, save files on the LAN on my computer. Um, and that brings me to uh, some other points. I'm going to say some good things and some bad things. This is just my opinion, the way I feel about it. You know, don't be offended. That's, I'm not trying to be too critical here. I'm just saying what's on my mind. But I'm also saying whatever I want because I did pay for this. One notable thing is this does not have a real-time clock. That's an interesting decision to not include a real-time clock. I'm not sure why. Uh, like, you can set it up to automatically sync with time via LAN or internet, uh, but it doesn't also support Wi-Fi dongle either, so it, it seems a weird choice to leave out an RTC and yet uh, also not support a Wi-Fi dongle. Uh, for me, it's not a problem. I can run a LAN cable. You know, I'm technically inclined that way. I can do a hardwire connection. Uh, you can get a wireless bridge adapter that's powered by USB that you can hook up to the wired connection on here and power it via the USB on the back or front, whatever works. It's an odd choice. I, I, I did try a Wi-Fi dongle that's the same chip as the one that Siglent sells for the other scopes. It does not work, so it does not have any drivers installed for uh, common Wi-Fi dongles anyways. So I did try that just to see if that would work. Um, the wireless mouse, I really like the mouse feature. That is working well. This is a Logitech M187. I like the size. It's nice and compact for my bench. It doesn't get in the way and it works well. So yes, and I found that quite useful because I actually have a shelf above my bench, which just normally sits on. I injured my shoulder. So this has been quite helpful in uh, saving uh, extra work for my shoulder. That was just a coincidence, uh, injuring my shoulder around the same time I've got this. But anyways, that's that. Uh, there are bad things to say about it. No, I, I'm not saying bad things. It's just, just, um, they just made some odd choices. Uh, and take it as you will. I don't know. I mean, my key say it doesn't even have a LAN connection. So how much can I complain, really? The plus to the real-time clock being uh, not in here is there is no battery to go bad. But at the same time, it just seems like an odd choice that's all i can say and yeah um no hdmi of course um that's not a big deal for me you'd think even doing youtube videos that i would be interested in that but well then i'd have to run an hdmi cable to my computer and to the scope when i can just record it off the camera uh, it, it doesn't really matter it's not a big it's not a deal breaker for me it's not that important I do like a lot of features about this. Um, I like the decoding, the memory depth, huge. 
And I'm surprised how much I like the uh, mouse and the touch screen. Uh, it just makes features more useful when you can just, you know, tap on something uh, and just type in. You can just type in your adjustments instead of uh, moving the knob. That's really nice. So pretty much anything you can change. Uh, and it has the quick keys here. So like megahertz, milliseconds. Sorry, I'm going to interject this part in wherever it fits best in the video here. One thing I forgot to do is I wanted to show you how this works. The, the touch screen is quite intuitive. So for example, if you tap on a trace, then you can move it up and down. You can use the touch screen to shuffle things around here. Just to give you an idea of, um, how useful that is. I forget to go over that because that's that's pretty neat. I mean, it saves a lot of, um, you know, figuring out how to select this, then using the positional knob to go up and down on each one. So yeah, you can select your traces there. Very handy. And just move them to wherever you want them to go. And you, once you get the hang of it, it's very useful. Um, just very easy to manage, move things around when you want. And some items will float and some won't. So uh, let's see, if I go into a counter here, that'll bring up a counter. And I can move that around, for example. Um, but there's there's some items like that and some not. So like you can't, you definitely can't move the channel stuff around that's fixed at the bottom. Same with the time base, that's all there. Uh, but you can also move windows around as well. So yeah, take some playing around with but the touch screen. I'm finding actually quite quite a bit more useful, enjoyable uh, than I thought it would because I thought it's kind of gimmicky, but uh, no, it's actually quite useful. So I'm uh, quite impressed with that as well as you can, you know, Change your scales that way too. So pinching and multi fingers. Uh, same with the vertical. Takes some kind of getting used to though. Should give you an idea. Anyways, back to the other program here. It definitely has my recommendation and approval, but it all depends on who you are. Um, I'm not going to tell you what you should get or what you shouldn't get. You can look through all my other videos on this and you know, I'm willing to answer any questions if you have them. Like I said, I spent um, quite a bit of time with this. I've had it for over a month now. I've used it for various things. And um, I just I had some thoughts. I wanted to do this video. It's not perfect. Like I said, I don't do reviews, but I wanted to at least give an honest and opinion of somebody who's used this for a bit. And when I think about it. I'm not saying there aren't useful videos out there. Um, there are uh, some other videos that, that are definitely useful. It's just I've been able to take my time and just go through the features and just play with it a bit and figure out what's what with it. Nothing big bug wise. I, I've used it for several hours. No crashes, um, no problems. And I've also checked um, the decoding and verified that with the key sight scope that it's decoding properly. The other drawback is and it, it's just different, right? The other drawback is, in a way, is there is a learning curve because you actually have the capability to manage the memory on this, uh, which I don't have with my Keysight scope. So that just, it's a known quantity. It, you get whatever um, memory depth it feels you need for the measurements. It, so there's no adjustment. Uh, this, you can, you know, go in your acquire menu, you can change your memory depth. And also you can change it to a fixed sample rate as well. So you can switch that around. It may be a little more complicated uh, than some other scopes, but you get rewarded once you figure out the best way to utilize the memory in the scope, if that makes sense. The key site I have has one meg points of memory. The Rigel had, uh, I think, unlocked it was what, 24, 12 or 24. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, so this does have quite a bit more memory than that. And it's just amazing uh, to me 
just how much you can capture with the scope and the memory depth. And I really like the way the decode works. The only other thing I'll mention, because it's worth mentioning, on some other scopes I've had, you could click on the horizontal and you get a fine control. This one instead brings up the zoom. There is no fine adjustment for the horizontal scale. And even if you go down to the time base here, you still can only go, um, like if you type in 1.5 milliseconds, for example, it's gonna go to two because that's the closest available. So there is no fine control zooming in and out. I haven't really found a problem with it, but it might be important to you. If it's important to you, it is. If it's not, it's not. And yeah, that's that's pretty much all I've got to add. I just figured if people can just go on here and gush over junk, I, I think I should be able to go on here and um, give my honest opinion what I think on something. <laughs> I've spent a lot of time with it. Anyway, so yeah, I'd say if you're looking for a scope in this price range and the features are appealing, yeah, I think it's worthwhile and, and very good scope, so... There you go. Not that my opinion counts for much. <laughs> That's it for now. Take care. Thanks for watching.